I'm Nancy Sherrick, the mathematician behind Representations of the Braid Group, the winning video of Science Magazine's 2017 Dance Your PhD competition. This is a behind the scenes look of the math of our video. We learned in the previous video what a representation is. It's a special kind of function that takes in braids and does something clever to them and spits out matrices. And so now we want to ask, how good was that representation? How good was that translation process? And what sort of thing would we look at to measure how good that translation was? And it turns out it all comes down to the kernel of the representation. So we saw in the second half of the video, there was a kernel, a braid, who tried to get into the matrix. They scanned her braid and they rejected her. They didn't let her in and she was taken away and labeled the kernel. So let's sort of see what the kernel is all about. Now, this is some pretty complicated abstract mathematics, so I'll do my best to describe it to you, but I really encourage you to go look up these words and try to learn some of the, the group theory and the abstract mathematics behind what's going into this. So first, we need to understand the identity matrix. The identity matrix is a matrix that has ones along the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. The way that I want you to think about this matrix is, well, one, it's just some matrix. Okay, nothing special there. But secondly, we want to think of this matrix as maybe sort of the center of all of the other matrices, but it's kind of a boring one. It doesn't have a whole lot of information. It's just zeros and ones. There's nothing truly special about it. It's just this bland matrix right in the middle of everything. So the question now is, what does the kernel have to do with measuring how good the representation was or how good the translation was. So here's how it works. You can think of any information that got sent to the identity as information that got lost. Because over here, I had different braids. They had character, they had all sorts of tangles and crossing information, but I sent them to the bland matrix the boring matrix that didn't have any information encoded in it. So all of these braids got lost. When I'm over here in the land of the matrices, I can't tell these braids apart anymore because they all got sent to the same matrix. So looking at how big the kernel is and how many braids are in the kernel is measuring a collapse, a loss of information. And it turns out, and this is sort of built into the structure again, but it turns out you only need to look at these collections, this kernel, to tell how much information was lost. So it's like this collapsing idea. And so if we want to say that a representation like did a good job or faithfully translated the information, all we do is look how big was the kernel. If there was only one braid that mapped to the identity matrix, then we say the representation was faithful. Because that means there wasn't much information lost. Only one braid was lost to the identity matrix. So we say it faithfully translated the information. However, if there were many braids that got mapped to the identity matrix, then all of those braids got lost in the translation. So it was a bad translation. So we would call that representation or that translation unfaithful because it didn't faithfully translate our information. So these, this, these two different definitions here really lended to some drama in my video and I, I did that intentionally. So the way that I illustrated these two concepts was to have two different characters playing representations. One of the representations only had one kernel the other representation had two kernels. So one was faithful, one was unfaithful. And within those scenes, we saw that a representation annihilates its kernel. Now, in the video, that was super dramatic and it looked like these dancers died, they fell to their death, oh, woe is me, and their silks. But really what's happening here is mathematicians use the word annihilation to say got sent to the identity map. So, Really, in the math land, it's not super exciting, but you know, it was a good moment there to really grasp some drama. And just to close, we see at the end of the video when the kernel escapes, sort of saves herself and hides herself in the matrices. Well, two things I want to point out there. 
One of them is at the very end of the video, she puts on a shirt, and that shirt has a matrix on it. If you look really carefully, the shirt she's wearing is the identity matrix. It's ones along the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So she's putting on the shirt that would actually be the matrix where she got sent to. So that's kind of fun. The second thing I want to point out is there's a point where the kernel rips off a name tag and changes a three to a four. What's happening there is she's changing the number of strands that the braids have. She's changing from three strands to four strands. And that is related to an open problem in mathematics about the Borel representation. And this is sort of the foundation of what my research is built off of. So the Borel representation is one type of translation process that we've been describing. And when you take the braid group on four strands, we don't know whether the Borel representation is faithful or unfaithful. Mathematicians have been trying to figure this out for a very long time and they just can't do it. And that's what I'm working on. We are making a second math dance video and we need your help. Go to gofundme.com slash mathdance to support our next project.